First of all, it's false advertising. Look at how fucking horrifying an actual bee looks. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another wonderful Pokemon Day. Today we'll be counting down the top 10 most forgettable Pokemon. Now this is not the weakest or the most disappointing, I'm saving those for another list. These are simply the Pokemon that I think even a true Pokemaniac would fail to mention when asked to, uh, name some Pokemon. So, some honorable mentions should be popping up on the screen right about now. Please do try to keep in mind that I enjoy every Pokemon that has been made thus far. These are simply ones that I think fall by the wayside, and uh, some of them I actually am pretty fond of myself. So let's get down to it before too much time is wasted. Here it is, Dayton's Top 10 List of the Most Forgettable Pokemon. Number 10. Gimmicky Pokemon are indeed a dime a dozen. You've got Ditto who can transform, Smeargle can copy any move, Rotom changes forms, Chatot uses your own voice. But above all of these, I think that Castform takes the title for the most forgettable. That may be a good thing, or a bad thing. Thank you, Peter Griffin. <laughs> well, he does have decent cult coverage in both Thunderbolt and Ice Beam, as well as Weather Ball. His stats simply don't hold up, and uh, I think he is best tossed by the wayside. Not one of my favorite Pokemon, definitely uh, a failed gimmick, and many people would be hard pressed to remember this little guy. Number 9. You've got Steel types in the world, Steel Rock types, Bastiodon and Agron. They can set up Stealth Rocks, use Thunder Wave, do all kinds of neato tricks, and uh, if you need some more help with all of that, fucking Mega Evolution Agron right there. So why in the world does Probopass exist? While its defenses are good, its HP just seems to let it down every single time. Sure, it can use a small, small Volt Switch. Sure, it reminds us of uh, some of our favorite characters and some of our least favorite characters. But all in all, I don't see a reason for it to exist. It's outclassed by a whole lot of things. Sorry, Probo Pass. Number eight. There are a ton of good psychic types out there. Probably too many. You've got Alakazam and Kadabra taking up the most of the real estate for the psychics out there. But you've got some bulkier types like Gothitelle and Musharna who get shoved by the wayside. So, who's the king of the ones that were shoved by the wayside? That's right, this creepy creepy creep is Mr. Mime. Oh my god, I'm glad most people don't remember him. I would pay money to forget this creature. It is the foulest, most unlikable, rancid excuse for a Pokemon that I have ever seen. It's pretty high on this list because it is an original Pokemon, so it is deeply ingrained in some of our memories forever. Number 7. Bug Poison is a pretty common type, and for that reason I would expect it to be a lot better. You've got Venomoth and Scolipede who kinda hold up uh, that typing by themselves, but then there's also Ariados and Beedrill who lack the ability to do much outside of look pretty awesome. But who is the champion among these poison bugs? The worst of them all, Dustox. That's right, this thing is memorable in just about no way. Uh, its stats are terrible, its look is bland. I really don't like it much at all. Its speed is abysmal, it gets Quiver Dance uh, and Compound Eyes, but it really has nothing to use with compound eyes. Quite an anomaly. And also stay out of my closet. Number six. There are lots of good water type Pokemon that fall by the wayside. 
Alamomola, Octillery, and Quillfish being some of my personal favorites. But there are also some water Pokemon that leave me wondering why indeed they exist at all. Love Disk is one of those Pokemon who has been shown no love and the weakest full evolution for the past three generations. Which I suppose is um, Game Freak's way of saying that love does not conquer all or anything at all, ever. <laughs> it is usable with a swift swim if you can get some rain dance up, but um, usable is not enough to win games most of the time, so Love Disc usually takes a back seat. Sorry, Love Disc. Number five. More bugs on this list. Oh my god. Bug flying is such an awesome type, especially these four guys right here. Some of my favorite bug flying types in the entire game. And then you've got Surskit, which is actually the only water bug type in the game. Surskit, who most people won't remember anyways, <laughs> evolves into Masquerade, who most people won't remember either. Um, they took away the water typing. Water bug was something that it really had going for it, and while Masquerade does learn Hydro Pump, it loses the same type attack bonus on that attack, which is just a damn shame. It's a cool design, I really like this Pokemon, but I feel that it was really let down with its evolution. Number 4. Alright, now we're hitting the real stinkers. Um, Again, I'm going to showcase my favorite flying bug types. This is another flying bug type. And um, on top of these four that I absolutely love, even though they're 50% weak to stealth rocks, there are a handful of Pokemon that are under the par. Pokemon such as Lydian, Beautifly, who is actually a du Dustox's sister-ish thing. <laughs> but out of all the flying bugs that I looked at, Combi has got to be the absolute worst. First of all, it's false advertising. Look at how fucking horrifying an actual bee looks. <laughs> Combi did have a gimmick to its name in that it had honey gather, which would then be used to smear on trees and attract Pokemon. Right. Number three. Talked about psychic Pokemon briefly before. Some of the toppest in the tier are indeed Alakazam and Espeon. They have so many uses, can be built so many different ways that it's hard for anything else to really compete with them. On the flip side of the psychic spectrum, you have uh, Hypno and I guess Grumpig, which fill their own roles. They're a little bit bulkier and have the ability to set up a little bit. Which, I guess, gives them their own niche. But out of all the pure Psychic-type Pokémon, I believe the worst, the most forgettable, is definitely Chingling. Not only do I dislike its design, even its evolution Kaimeko is absolutely pathetic as far as combat goes. It can stall things with uh, moves like Toxic and Recover, it can set up screens, but it has absolutely no offensive power. Number two? Oh my god, guys, look! It's Pikachu! How cute! Aww, we love you, Pikachu! Oh, look! It's Plusly Minin! How cute! They're kinda like Pikachu, but Plus and Minin! Yeah, how cute! Another electric type mouse thing. I guess that's wonderful. Something that we could use maybe, perhaps someday. Oh my god, are you guys serious with this shit? A flying one. Yep, we needed to have a flying one just because. Fuck! Out of this bunch, Pas Pachiraisu is absolutely the most forgettable. It does offer a couple of unique options. Volt Absorb is kind of nice, but it simply has too much competition with other electric mouse Pokemon to really uh, ever see the light of day. 
And number one. What if we had an awesome water type and it was also flying too? Oh, hey, Gyarados. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Yeah. Get that offensive power. Okay, well, what if we had another water type, but it was, like, a little more defensive or something like that? Oh, hey, Mantine. What's going on, dude? Hey, yeah, how you living? All right, got that nice uh, special defense stat. Well, what if we had something in the middle, you know? Something that, like, nobody would use because it's not really defensive or offensive completely? Oh, Pelipper! Hey, man, what's going on, dude? How you living? Uh, okay, have fun in the PC box. <laughs> Finally, we have Swana. Oh my god, why was this thing made? I'm so tired of these water flying types. I guess we needed a duck slash swan Pokemon. But really, I'm so disappointed by this thing. It does have a couple of unique things to offer, such as hydration and hurricane, and looking like Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. <laughs> but aside from that, its uh, stats are all really middling. It needs to pick either offensive or defensive in order to see some serious use. Its speed is pretty good. Maybe with Choice Specs or Choice Scarf, it, it could be pulled off, but... Overall, I think it's one of the Pokemon that falls by the wayside. The most forgettable, definitely, at least in my book. So friends, this has been the top 10 most forgettable Pokemon. I have been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. Hopefully you did enjoy my choices. If you have some uh, different opinions, the comments section is open for your use. <laughs> and I sincerely hope you will like, comment, and or subscribe. I hope to see you in the next one, friends. Until then, bye bye! One, two, three, four. Goodbye, goodbye, see you again. Goodbye, goodbye, see you, my friends.